This time on episode 180 of Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., we're going to start our Legion Watch with chapter one. We're going to talk about the weekly war Marvel news and your feedback. <laughs> I'm Michelle from the Starling Tribune, a proud member of the Gundam Geek Network. Just like the show you're listening to now, the opinions expressed are those of each individual host. Check out all the other podcasts at GundamGeekNetwork.com and get ready because geekiness begins in three, two, one. You have been granted clearance by Director Phil Coulson. Stand by for S.H.I.E.L.D. debriefing. All information to be discussed here is classified and may only be discussed among agents granted clearance by the S.H.I.E.L.D. director. Now it's time for your scheduled debriefing. I'm Director Stargate Pioneer. I'm Agent Haley. And I'm Agent Lauren. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., a Marvel Comic Universe fan show. This show is recorded on Sunday, June 11th, 2017. It's our new home, folks. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a fan-based podcast on the ABC television show Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Marvel's Daredevil Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist on Netflix, Legion on FX, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and the Marvel Comic Universe in general. Because of body swapping kisses. If you'd like to talk to us about body swapping kisses, you can find us at our website, legendsofshield.com. If you have any juicy voicemail to give us about body swapping kisses, you can call us on our voicemail line, 844-THE-BUS-1 or 844-843-2871. You can talk to everyone but Star Pie on our Facebook page, Legends of Shield Pos Podcast. You can talk to all of us, including Star Pie, on our Twitter, at Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you'd like to leave a comment about body swapping kisses on our YouTube companion videos, you can check out our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Gunna Geek. And remember, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a proud member of the GunnaGeek.com network. This episode, we're going to start looking in to the FX show Legion. Now we're going to start with chapter one, which aired on February 8th, 2017 on the FX cable channel, and it earned a 1.62 rating for its premiere. Legion, by the way, was renewed for a second season on March 15th, 2017. So we will be talking about this into next year. And this first episode was directed by Noah Hawley. He only has two directing credits for his shows, Legion and Fargo, a couple episodes of Fargo, and just this episode of Legion. And he is also the writer. He has a lot more writing credits. Um, he wrote, well, he was the executive story editor for 21 episodes of Bones and wrote actually six episodes, including uh, one of my favorite episodes, actually a couple of my favorite episodes, Stargazer in a Puddle, Spaceman in a Crater. Uh, yeah, just a whole bunch of episodes there. Uh, he also wrote for The Unusuals, which I never saw, My Generation, which I also never saw, Legion, and Fargo. He is also the producer for Legion, as well as the producer for Fargo and Bones. So he not only directed and wrote, but he produced this series as well. This was his vision and I think it needed to be him to do this first episode, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's talk about the main cast, though, because this is a new show. We're delving into it. It was starring David Holler, and, or excuse me, st starring Dan Stevens as David Holler, who you might remember from sh such shows as The Tomorrow People, Downtown Abbey, Downton Abbey, excuse me, and Sense and Sensibility. He was also the Beast in Beauty and the Beast that just came out recently. I did not know that. Yes, he has an excellent singing voice. <laughs> Rachel Keller played the part of Sydney Sid Barrett. She's also been in The Mentalist, Supernatural, and Fargo. Aubrey Plaza plays Lenny Busker. She is in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Troopers, 
Parks and Recreation. She's so fantastic <laughs> in Parks and Recreation. Portlandia. And she's a voice in The Legend of Korra. Aubrey Plaza is my spirit animal. I know. I love her. <laughs> now, she's so good in this. <laughs> she is. She's amazing in this. And really... <laughs> Not quite a diversion from Parks and Recreation, but a definitely a different tone than Parks and Recreation. Bill Irwin played Carrie Laudermilk, who his acting credits go back to Popeye. Yes, the movie Popeye in 1980. He was also in Sesame Street, believe it or not. Lights Out, Sleepy Hollow, Law and Order Special Victim Units, and you might have seen him as a character actor in dozens of other shows. So Bill Irwin has a ton of experience. Yeah, we didn't see him in this episode, but we will going forward. Jeremy Harris plays Tonomy Wallace. He has been in Person of Interest and The Get Down. Uh, we saw him a little bit in this episode, but we'll get a lot more of him going forward. We have Amber Midthunder as Carrie Loudermilk, spelled differently than Carrie Loudermilk. This one's with a K. His is with a C. That's explored a little more later. Um, she has been in things like... Uh, hold on, I just lost my place. <laughs> She's been in Banshee, Longmire, The Originals, uh, a bunch of short movies, just a bunch of little things. And uh, she is a Native American actress. So that's always cool to see. Yay, media representation. Yeah, and Katie Azelton played Amy Holler. Is it Holler? Hall Haller. Holler. Holler. It's Holler. Holler, who is the sister of David. And you might have seen her as a bit part in such shows as The Office, Revolution, and I think she had a more extensive part in the TV show The League in 2015. Jean Smart plays Melanie Bird. Uh, she has been in Designing Women, Frasier, The District, 24, Kim Possible, Samantha Who, Stuff My Dad Says, Hawaii Five-O, and Fargo. She's also a voice in one of my favorite, like, weird cult cartoons, The Oblongs. She is an incredibly experienced actor and probably the most noted of the entire cast and, and definitely up there with like, Bill Irwin as far as the experience. But a ton of shows, you, you know her from other shows, whether you realize it or not. If you've been watching TV over the last couple of decades, you know who Gene Smart is. We have Hamish Linklater as part of the returning, like the recurring cast as Clark. He's been in Gideon's Crossing, New Adventures of Old Christine with our uh, favorite, Phil Coulson, uh, Battleship, The Newsroom, Fargo. He's going to be in an upcoming production of A Midsummer's Night Dream. Uh, he was in 42 with, again, favorite T'Challa, uh, Chadwick Boseman. Uh, the Fantastic Four from 2005 is on Pushing Daisies. He's been in a whole bunch of stuff. It's your turn, Star Pie. Oh, I thought it was yours. No. My bad. David Selby played a Blue Breaker. Blue Brew Baker. Baker Brew me. Baker. As in Ed Brew Baker, the comics writer. There you go. And da he's, David has been in such show as The Dark Shadows, The Waltons. That's how far back he goes. Kojak. There's another old one. A movie called Raise the Titanic. Another movie called D3, The Mighty Ducks. Yay. <laughs> and he was in a voice character as Batman, The Dark Knight Returns, Part 1 and Part 2. Ellie Areza is playing Philly. And she, she can. yeah, she really doesn't have a lot of credits okay. to her note today that anybody would really know. So this is kind of her breakout role. Yeah, she does have acting experience, though. Going back to 2004, uh, she did some shorts. But none of the other things on her IMDb are things I recognize. She did a TV series called The Bridge. I remember that. I liked that show. Uh, we have Brad Mann as Rudy. He's uh, kind of a, he shows up in a lot of genre shows. He's in Smallville, Battlestar Galactica, The 4400, Revolution, Almost Human, 
Supernatural, Fargo. Um, yeah. A lot of stuff. Yeah, definitely. I was surprised to see his IMDb filmography, and it's usually just a bit actor. Like, I think he was a Marine on the Pegasus and Battlestar Galactica, so yeah. you wouldn't really remember him too much, but he has been in a lot of productions. So if you see him and you say, hey, that guy looks familiar, he probably does. Yeah, that's right. And then moving on, Quentin Bosclair is plays the devil with yellow eyes, which is definitely an interesting character. Quentin doesn't have a lot of acting credits to his name. And I, I can't actually, yeah. So I, I read an article about this guy when I was trying to figure out who is this guy. Uh, he worked at a comic book store. He's a, actually a comics fan. And somebody was walking in, I guess, to buy a bunch of comics. And they realized you have the perfect body type as like a creature because he's like, I don't know, six, five, six. He's, he's really tall and really skinny. So. When they were saying how when he was in the makeup chair and they were getting him all made up as the devil with yellow eyes, he was actually telling the makeup department more about the character and stuff because he's read the comics and he knows all about this stuff. So he was he ended up being an actual like valuable resource on the set. I was just going to get to that, actually, Lauren. So, yeah, thank you very much for retelling that. that it was really neat seeing somebody come forward that actually n knew a lot about what was going on, which is imperative, I think, in the show, because they I think they probably all had the scripts the entire season before they started, but it would really confuse the crap out of me reading the first script. Even going forward, I would still be confused by the first episode. <laughs> we have Mackenzie Gray as Walter slash the eye. This guy has so many credits y'all going back to 1992 but uh just looking at it like the i'm gonna look at his okay well i'm gonna look at his more recent credits uh he's again in legion he's a voice in my little pony friendship is magic uh he's in an episode of riverdale he's in dirk gently's holistic detective agency which i still need to watch he's a lord iranian delegate in warcraft the beginning uh, which I guess just came out here as Warcraft because I, it didn't do well in the U.S. to get a sequel, but it did well everywhere else. Uh, Legends of Tomorrow, he's in there as uh, Time Master and Council Member Number One. He's, wow, he's just in so much. Uh, Metallica Through the Never. Uh, Ninjago, he's a voice. He was Obadiah Stane in Iron Man Armored Adventures, which was a cartoon that ran for a couple of years back in, like, 2008 through 2012. Um, he was Lex Luthor clone and Dr. Alistair Craig in Smallville. He's just been on a lot of stuff. Like, wow, so much stuff. I know. I was <laughs> Babylon 5, Legend of the Rangers. Yeah, I was looking at his IMDb, getting ready for this, his filmography, getting ready for this podcast. And a couple that caught my eye, like Andromeda and Fringe. But the one that I was like, oh, I still need to watch this. It was on my watch list for a while and I just haven't done it was Stargate Infinity. It was that great cartoon about the Stargate oh, universe. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. I remember I saw the DVD at an HEB precisely once, didn't pick it up for some reason and have never seen it again. Yeah, so I definitely have to see that. And oh, by the way, just today, a co-host of mine on other podcasts, Chris Farrell, just link me a story that Stargate Universe is going to continue its run as a comic book with I've the been seeing that. yeah mm -hmm. with the American mythology uh, brand in I think this week or next week when it drops so I definitely have to add it to my pull list it's just going to be a short comic run detailing how the cliffhanger ends so it's not really done by anybody that is in charge of like canon for Stargate Universe, but it's as good as it's going to get for anything out there as an ending to the series. So I can't wait for that. But anyway, th that's all because Mackenzie Gray was in Stargate Universe as far as me thinking about Stargate recently, which is woohoo, Stargate. Yay. Scott Lawrence is playing the part of Henry Poole, and he's got a long acting pedigree. Going back to Murder, She Wrote, he was also in New Heart, L.A. Law, Murphy Brown, Quantum Leap, Time Cop, Star Trek Voyager, Touched by an Angel, The West Wing, Jag, Bones, ER, Avatar, The Social Network, Sons of Anarchy, Star Trek Into Darkness, and Fear the Walking Dead. So just a ton, as you could tell, there is some substantial uh, 
experience on this show. Another one that I need to bring up is Devin Dalton, who was largely a stunt woman, but she did play the role of the angry boy in this series so far. So she's also been in Supernatural and War for the Planet of the Apes. And kind of rounding up the recurring cast is Jemaine Clement as Oliver Bird. So I really love Jemaine Clement. Um, he's probably best known for Flight of the Concords. Uh, he's also in What We Do in the Shadows, which is one of my favorite movies. And actually, you can hear me uh, talking about it on um, Art House Legends. Uh, he's also a voice in Despicable Me. He's in Men in Black 3. He's in Muppets Most Wanted. Uh, he's in an episode of Rick and Morty that's absolutely fantastic, mm -hmm. where he's doing like a, Dave, a David Bowie type song. And he does a David Bowie type song again in Moana as the voice of Tamatoa, the giant crab. Uh, he's just a lot of voices. He's in another period, Trip Tank, Inside Amy Schumer, the BFG. Just he's a really funny guy with a really great voice. And uh yeah, he he's worked a lot with Taika Waititi, who we will see directing Thor three very soon. So you know a lot of people listening to this podcast are Flight of the Concords fans, so he was in that, of course. And he yeah. played a voice, I, I forget the character's voice, but he played a voice in the Lego Batman movie. Yeah. Um uh, I still need to see that. I haven't seen that. Yet. Of course, I saw the the Lego movie. What was that? The first one? Yeah, the Lego movie. Uh, I think Lego Batman is either out on Blu-ray or should be soon. So I'll be checking it out then. Yep. All right. All right now we're going to move into the actual episode here. Chapter one in true comic book style. Chapter one. Haley, what's the meaning of chapter one? Is it just comics or is there more to it? It's the first chapter of this season long story. That you get to the end of and you're like, I feel like I understand about 30% of what's happened so far. <laughs> Definitely. So, so chapter one, I, I felt in, in true comic books. That I think Heroes was in chapters too, at least the first it was. episode, his first season. No, the, the whole thing I think was in chapters and they were all like, but it was chapters and then like a subtitle. And mm -hmm. this the is just a season. And yeah. 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 And this is just like chapter one chapter. It's, it's done in like a story format. As we've mentioned before on Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., if you've listened to us talk about Legion at all, all three of us are still, as Haley just mentioned, confused about this in general. Watching it a second time has definitely helped. And definitely knowing where the end is with uh, chapter eight or chapter nine. I forget how many episodes there are. Eight. And, and being able to apply that here. But I remember the first time watching chapter one going, what the heck is this? I don't understand it at all. Haley, you were the first one to watch this. And you said, guys, I really need to talk to you about Legion because I don't understand it at all. It's still true. <laughs> <laughs> See, I feel like I get it. And I don't know if that's because I also have some mental stuff. I not like t to this extent, but I have I have anxiety that I am medicated for. And that reminds me, I forgot to take my medication this morning. Um, somebody remind me after the podcast. You got it. Um, but I, I get this whole very disjointed experience. And well, then again, I also don't know if maybe it's because I've actually read the Legion comics, but the combination of, I feel like, knowing people in who have various mental illnesses and have described those experiences to me, um, and having read the comics and sort of knowing what to expect, and being familiar with narratives with unreliable narrators, I kind of get this. It, I, that's not the part I don't get. I just, even by the end of the series, or the season, I still feel like there's things that the storytellers are not being upfront with us about. Like, still, like all the things we, we know to be true in the show so far are not necessarily true because of the way that they're telling the story. Because at the end of the season, it seems like David 
is of sound mind, but he has this other mutant issue which he's dealing with. And that's where it seems like at the end. Okay, but I'm not so sure if that's true. The thing is, in the comics, and presumably here, David Haller is legitimately mentally ill. He also has a mutant power. Like, that's the thing. They're like, oh, you're not mentally ill. You have powers, which is, it's one of those things that I, I've Charles seen. That's Xavier's story. Is yeah. that he thought he was crazy and he wasn't. He just was It's, it's a narrative that I've seen kind of, it's, it's like a love-hate narrative in like the mental illness community because you're saying, you know, there, it's sort of the, your mental, Ill, you, mental illness isn't a real thing. Or on the other hand, what is wrong with you? People don't believe you. It, it's it's this really divided storyline but the thing with david is that he has both and it's something that isn't really tackled all that much in the x-men comics and the whole point of david was that he is somebody who has both and because of his abilities it makes his powers very unpredictable so let's back up a second and let's just review mutants and what happens with mutants mutants is a gene that you have and then your powers start manifesting themselves when you go through puberty right yes okay and in this in the beginning of this episode we get a montage of david growing up and clearly there's something just not right with it but by the time he gets to be a teenager when his mutant powers start manifesting themselves that's when everything really kicks off yeah, and the thing is, especially with, with schizophrenia and, okay, well, that's the thing. Media is really unclear about the difference between schizophrenia and disassociative identity disorder. Schizophrenia and disassociative identity disorder are not the same thing. Schizophrenia has to do with your mind perceiving certain things as, it, it has to deal with, uh, not perceiving things correctly whether it's hearing voices or whether it's seeing things that aren't there or whether it's having delusions of uh things that aren't real disassociative di identity disorder which is still like a really controversial um diagnosis is the idea that in order to protect yourself like from a trauma you your identity sort of fragments and you create these like protector identities to sort of deal with what's going on and they are not the same thing and with david in the comics he very clearly has disassociative identity disorder he has different personalities that um, each of them has a different power essentially what we're seeing here is a little bit more schizophrenia See, Haley, this is the sort of stuff that we were missing for the last few weeks when Lauren was away. <laughs> she is our walking, talking DSM-5, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. So it's so great to have you back on the podcast, Lauren. I really missed you guys. Like when I was just like lying on the couch, just like shaking with fever and stuff. By the way, I had bronchitis. Um, not I've fun. Heard that. It was not fun. Yeah, not fun. Yeah, it wasn't full blown pneumonia where you get the really good drugs. Yeah, I I was worried about that. I was I was getting ready to go to the doctor, and then the next day I was like, "Oh, I can actually breathe without it hurting my lungs." I think I'm on an upswing. Did you almost pass yourself out or cough yourself unconscious? Because that's always good. Yeah, uh, make yourself sick coughing. That's always mm -hmm. good. no. no you like it's happened to me where I'm coughing so bad that but you're not breathing in, so. You don't have oxygen. Right. And yeah. The, the uh, tunnel vision starts and you start seeing stars and stuff like that. Yeah, and then the, the, the pressure in your head gets so big that you're like, just somebody kill me now. Everything's terrible. Drill a hole in the side I of my head. head. I, I couldn't miss any more work because I was oh. I had been talked to about attendance. So I just got to go to work for two weeks with bronchitis. Good times. Oh. Yeah. Was that your former employer? Yes. Yeah. It on. was Walmart. F those yeah. guys. I, I, yeah. yeah. We, we had to be <laughs> very no careful for a very now. long time talking about Haley's employer, but now apparently it's uh, out in the open. So no, now they go. can just live under the bus for all I care. <laughs> there you go. 
Okay, talking about living under the bus, Lawrence, since you actually read the comic, maybe you can give us a little background into Clockworks, what it is and what the differences are between okay. this show and the, in the comics. Um, so as far as I can tell, Clockworks is a completely created thing for the show. Uh, it's supposed to be just like a mental health facility, which, again, it's one of those things that in the mental health community, it's one of these things that is not like really great to see portrayed on TV because when you go to a mental health facility, it is legitimately to help you. Horror movies and stuff like that have portrayed them. And again, in the past, this is supposed to be about the seventies though. So a mental yeah. health facility would not be the greatest place. It would not be the greatest place. That's also but... a lot cleaner than I would expect a seventies mental health facility to look. Yeah, I mean, there there was that whole um, thing that, I mean, for all that I really don't like the guy, uh, Geraldo Rivera did a really good expose on a mental health facility that was abusing its patients back in the day. Um, look into that. It's like really worth knowing about. But anyway, um, mental health facilities are there to try and get you better. Uh, they should not be stigmatized. At the same time, they should also be held accountable for their actions. But anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there. This facility is, as far as I can tell, a creation for the show. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did David spend any time in a mental health facility in the comics? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, just constantly in and out because, just yeah, like I Just not necessarily clockworks. Yeah. Okay. David, by the way, is also the person who's responsible for creating the Age of Apocalypse and Age of X storylines because he can basically create pocket universes. He's very powerful. Indeed. So let's talk about his power a little bit. We see it manifest itself. Basically, we're given the entire season in a nutshell in this episode, and we didn't realize it when we first watched it. You had the kitchen scene. You had the scene in the interrogation at the bottom of the swimming pool. So you had different things going on, which were showing what his powers could be, not all of them, but at least that he's very powerful. And it kind of was the first time I watched it, it was like, what is going on? What exactly is his power? So telekinesis, but it's more than that. So have you ever watched that South Park episode where they have the weapons and they're it's like they're playing it's like an anime and Cartman's like Balrog has many powers. That is basically David. He has if not all the powers, a whole lot. Here what we really see played with are the telekinesis and telepathy, which you would expect considering that not really a spoiler, Charles Xavier is his dad. This is his biological father. In the comics after World War II, Xavier spent some time in uh, in Israel and hooked up with a Holocaust survivor, survivor, Gabrielle Holler. They had the kid. He didn't know about him. And that's how all of this happened. Here, it's a bit more tenuous because we know that somehow Xavier had a kid. But we don't know how exactly everything happened other than Xavier had sex. I mean, obviously, but uh, we see a little bit of there's some hints at the whole splitting personalities thing. There's, you know, when he sees the he's talking to his sister at the very beginning of when we see him in Clockworks. And when she's asking him, do you still see things that aren't there? He sees people in the corner. Are they aspects of his personality? I've seen some commentary that suggests they are. Or are they just hallucinations? Um, we've just, without getting, I'm trying not to get into spoilers for stuff later. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> but, so, so we'll, we'll continue to explore all that in the future. But to explore all of the powers and everything else in this episode, there were time jumps that were happening left, right, and backwards. The first time you watch it, you're like, what is happening when? And then you come to the conclusion of you get a little bit of what's happening uh, real time and then what happened before, what happened like a long time ago history. And it, there are rapid time jumps and it's very difficult. There's no distinguishing between the times uh, other than like David as a young person that you really understand 
what is happening when. So yeah, there's like the kitchen scene. There's some scenes where you can sort of tell by looking at his hair. Right. And then as the show goes on and the use of like clothing is recurring, you can sort of tell by that. But it's it's very difficult this first episode to figure yeah. out what is happening when and that contributes to the confusion as we go on. So let's get Which, into again, yeah. just real quick, I feel does really well in putting the viewer in David's state of mind. Mm. This is a person who uh, because of his mental state and because of his powers contributing to it has a really hard time focusing on the present and things as they are yeah and he himself in the interrogation room had a problem distinguishing what actually happened outside of clockworks where he was putting the interrogator hamish right he was putting hamish in the car but it wasn't it was actually uh the um uh melanie Burke melanie. In, yes. in the car instead so his mind was playing tricks on him even then now what they were doing to him in the pool they first of all they gassed him and then they went to plan b which was right put, because he was about to escape right yeah and then put put him in the chair and then had electricity just running all over the place just a bad idea by the way well that's the point i mean if he does anything they're like okay we'll kill you <laughs> but they end up killing themselves because they're all yeah. attached via some sort of water yeah it's I mean, so what these guys are, we're introduced to the situation with these interrogators as a thing has happened at Clockwork. David was involved. Someone is dead. Someone is missing. At first, we don't know who is dead, who is missing, what happened. And then because of David's kind of fractured state of mind, he isn't the best kind of source to figure out what happened and he's having a hard time focusing and as we learn more of what's going on we find out well first of all he was there he was hanging out with a friend he meets this girl sid sid does not like being touched that's okay it's you know it's a mental facility. Everybody has their thing. Honestly, when I was younger, I didn't like being touched. It took me a long time to be comfortable hugging people. So everybody has their thing. It's not that weird. So David and Sid get close. There's some really good touching scenes between them. And then when he finds out Sid's getting out, he goes and gets really excited and goes to kiss her goodbye. And then things get weird. Monumentally er bad idea. <laughs> Yeah, I can't blame him so, though. I mean, if you're if you're head over heels on somebody and you don't know if you're going to see him again, might as well give him a kiss. So you know, I don't blame David for doing this. Yeah. So who wants to talk about what happened I when think David kissed Haley Sid? needs to talk about what happened. Nothing bad happened. Everything worked out really well for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so Sid's powers is to body swap, and it's for a limited amount of right. time. But she body swaps, which they're also inconsistent about exactly how that swap works because in when the kiss happens it's like their consciousness swaps their bodies stay where they are but later when they switch back their bodies are the ones that move and their consciousness stays where it is maybe that's actually how it happens but then i think the same thing sort of happens later it's like their consciousness is swapped at first and then the bodies join the consciousness okay so i i, I guess i need to like pay a, more attention like this a watch rubber banding thing, thing. But yeah, I guess in a later episode. The problem anyway, isn't with David. The problem actually is with Sid. Yeah, at right. first you think, think oh, a Nubia bazooka. Yeah, at first you think, oh, David did a thing and this thing, and then you realize, oh no, this body swap, and she's in his body with his powers. And again, yeah, they give a Nubia bazooka line, and things go very wrong at Clockworks. Yeah, doors like, are missing. Uh, everybody's are... sealed in their rooms without doors. People are in walls. Very Philadelphia yeah. experiment. Not just anybody. And Lenny was. Lenny dies. Yeah. Yes, Lenny. Aubrey Plaza. Lenny. You see her sealed in a wall. It's not great. It's very sad. I was like, but she's a regular in the series. <laughs> see, at the time, I, had, I hadn't heard much about Legion before watching it. So I was like, 
I adore Aubrey Plaza. How did I not know she was in this? And I was like, oh, I guess it's because she's only in one episode. <laughs> not, not the case. I mean, we, fi so the we find out at the end of the episode that she's still alive or mentally still there or whatever. Well, at she's first a I was like, oh. Of yeah, she's a yeah, figment she, of David's I, mind at the end. At yeah, least. when we, because they body swap and uh, Sid was getting out, when David's, you know, out, he's like, oh, I'm just going to enjoy this for a bit. And he ends up going to his sister's place once he gets his body back. So he's there. Everything's awkward. See, I was wondering and about then the he starts. I, I was, I, just what, wait a second. I was wondering about the figment of imagination because Lenny's actually talking to Sid. It's not just Lenny's in, interacting with David. Lenny interacted with Sid on the way out. Right. But we're being told this story by David. So uh, you yes. never know for sure what's happening. Yes. So we see. Lenny, you know, David starts imagining Lenny and she's like, oh, you killed me, but it's cool. I mean, what was I going to do? Just hang out at that place all the time and people are going to come after you. They're going to kill you. And at first I was like, oh, okay. So he's just going to have a head Lenny for the rest of the series. It's going to be like Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> and it's kind of wrong and kind of right. Yeah. And we'll talk about that more in later episodes. <laughs> right. So. We've had all this leading up to at the very end, they come, Sid comes to rescue yeah. David in yeah. the pool. Uh, there's which, by the way, I love how okay, because yes, this 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 group of people, Department Three, comes and gets David, and they call him D3 through the whole thing, which is funny because it reminds me of Mighty Ducks, like you mentioned <laughs> earlier, but. We find out the way that Sid tells, you know, kind of helps to rescue David is she's implanted some, like, she's been implanted in his memory of the incident where he got grabbed. So again, we see another incident of unreliable memory because she's having this conversation and then he's like, wait, what? And then he turns back and he's having a memory of having the memory of that conversation that they just had. And you see this weird recurring thing and it's so cool. Like it took me a second when I first saw it to realize what was going on. But again, the second watch through, I was able to appreciate it so much more. I really love what they're doing with memory and the unreliability of memory because really if you read up about your brain, your brain is tricking you like 95% of the time. Like your, your brain does the bare minimum of work to um, kind of fudge in reality around you. So it's really no surprise that people have hallucinations and stuff like that. It's really, really interesting stuff. But anyway, now if I could just can you know, relay that to my actual job and just explain it to him. Well, I'm sorry. My brain was tricking me. I, I, I thought I had another week for this due date. Anyway, there was this big battle at the at the high school slash we'll just call it a prison, but it was really a high school, which just happened to be on the edge of uh, cliffs and a you know major body of water, which was I guess as pretty cool. Yeah, as all great high schools are, and it was a really intriguing. I mean, they pulled out the stops a lot of special effects because you have mutant powers in use on the battlefield as well as high explosives and guns and everything and let's not forget the devil with the yellow eyes shows up at the end as well so it was it was a very good ending to the entire episode and you felt at the end of the episode like things were going to start making sense we learned later <laughs> that they don't but we think they are so it hooks you in for the rest of the series so the first time you saw the devil with yellow eyes, what was your reaction? What that is, thing was so creepy. What is right. a yellow Jabba the Hutt, a jaundiced Jabba the Hutt <laughs> doing in this show? They did such a good job with that design. It's so freaky. They did indeed. It, it was really yep. good. And like, we see it over and over and over again. So unsettling. I love it. So something else, and it happens throughout the season. Um, there are some little anachronistic moments like during the interrogation. He's got like this advanced tablet and I was thinking throughout the first episode and even at the end that maybe the story is not taking place when we're told it is like we're we're told 
through everything that we're seeing that this is in the 70s, but maybe that's not the case. Yeah, it's it's a very 70s aesthetic. And I know that Noah Hawley went on record saying that he wanted like a very Wes Anderson look to all of this, which you can really, really see. But there's, yeah, there's these weird anachronisms that make it not quite futuristic, but it, it's like a story out of time. Mm -hmm. And you could explain that by, you know, this is taking place in the X-Men timeline. At this point, there has been time travel in it and more advanced technologies happening earlier than they should have, you know, after Days of Future Past, especially, and the things Trask might have been doing. But it seems odd that you would see something like a tablet in an interrogation room and nobody asks what it is. And there's, like I said, there's other things going forward in other episodes. So this could be being told from Oliver Bird's standpoint as well. True. So you have a lot of mind games being played in this across the board and you just never know, but we'll keep an eye on it as we go yes. forward. The, the tablet is a very good indicator. I'm trying to remember about the monitors that were in the tent in the gym next to the pool, if those were... No, I, re I remember thinking those looked pretty 70s-ish. They looked very 70s. They looked very... Like, they would not look out of place in, like, a 70s sci-fi movie. And you can say, you know, this is some sort of secret, c covert agency. They're going to have whatever the most advanced thing they could have at the time is. So I... If I were seeing like 80s technology, I would be able to say, yeah, sure, they're they're on the cutting edge of technology at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So two things that I wanted to mention real quick. The use of costume design on the show is fantastic. And mm -hmm. the use of music on the show is fantastic. Uh, and I can't believe we haven't talked about the little Bollywood dance number out of nowhere at the end. <laughs> Go ahead. Now's your chance. Let's talk about well, it. Well, there's a little Bollywood dance number out of nowhere at the end. It takes yeah, I mean, there's not much else. Everyone's happy. and There's not much else to say about it, but yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely it's, there. It's there. It's, I mean, the thing is, it's, it's kind of completely appropriate <laughs> in that it's out of nowhere, and yet it is completely appropriate for the situation. Yeah, it was. It, I don't know. I mean, you're talking about uh, something that had confused me very much. And even though I didn't watch it right when it aired, I did watch it late at night and I thought maybe I was just tired. No, it, no, that wasn't the case at all. So yeah, the dance number was kind of at that point, I was like, okay, you know, I'm just going to go with it. But this is a very interesting series. If we've wanted to talk about it for quite some time, I know Haley wanted to talk about it from like the day after it aired. So if you have anything to say about the series Legion in general or episode one or chapter one, episode one in particular, don't be afraid to give us a holler you know, put us a, a comment on the YouTube channel, send us a voicemail, uh, call us at 844-THE-BUS-1 or 844-843-2871, send us a tweet at Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. or you can send me an email at StargatePioneer at GinnaGeek.com and we will definitely talk about it next week. The next episode that we talk about is going to be Luke Cage this Wednesday night, the 5th, 14th of June, but we will be back next Sunday talking about Legion in episode 182. So episode 181, the next episode will be Luke Cage. No, episode 182 will be Legion chapter two. Haley, any last words? Um, I have a few quotes. I didn't get them all because there were a lot of funny things that were said, but... Well, you don't have to be a dick about it. <laughs> you guys have any waffles? <laughs> really? Waffle? And he ate waffles. I, he I, ate so many waffles. I mean, like, tons of waffles. So, dude yeah. really had some anti-drug stuff going on or something. I don't, don't give a newbie, newbie a bazooka and act surprised when she blows stuff up. That's true. Is this real? Are you real? I just need to know, is this... It, it pretty much sums up this season. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for all that... Okay. I feel like we might sound like we were just jumping all over the place, 
But if you haven't seen the show, watch the first episode and then you'll be like, oh, I get it now. <laughs> it is available on Amazon Prime, by the way. Uh, you have to buy it for 20 bucks. I think it might be available on Hulu as well. It's, the it's currently available on Hulu. It's listed as expiring. So I binged watched it at the beginning of the month and it's still there. So it, I don't know when it's expiring, but apparently it will be at some point. I know some of the Hulu contracts, it's like it, they have the streaming rights to start with, but then once the season's done, those rights go to like Amazon Prime or Netflix or something. Yeah, I actually had to buy the series. It wasn't free. I do have an Amazon Prime membership. The neat thing about watching it on the computer on Amazon Prime is they have this thing called X-Ray on the left-hand side, which if you mouse your, your mouse cursor over the screen, the window, it will show up who the actors are that are actually appearing in the screen. And that changes as it goes along to keep up with who's being shown and who goes away. So you, you get a better sense of what's going on. I really enjoyed that. That's the first time I ever used it. And I will probably be using it again. So Amazon Prime, it did good in helping me out understand this particular series. So if any series that that was important, I believe this was important to understand what was going on and who was who. And I still don't know everything of what's going on. So maybe I need to read the comics, to get a little bit more. Read grounding. Legion Quest. Legion, Legion Quest. Quest is a good place to start. And I don't know if Amazon is still having their just major sale on pretty much every Marvel comic ever, but they were for a while there. So check it out. Absolutely. All right. So remember episode 181, the next one will be on Luke Cage as we round out the series there. And then 182 next Sunday will be Legion chapter two. That let's move on to some news. <laughs> <laughs> all right you might remember us during um during the end of the season wondering the season of agents of shield wondering what was going to happen with all of these characters that are alive in the framework but dead in our world and showrunner jed whedon has said we will not be seeing them again Oh. oh, yeah, I guess they discussed the possibility, but then too many schedules to work out. So never mind. <laughs> they may come back outside of the framework. That would be, you know, in another car incarnation. That's always possible in comics. Yeah, I mean, something else could happen, but especially at the end with Radcliffe, it kind of looked like everything that had been in the framework is really gone. Bummer. Yeah. Yep. It was nice seeing Trip again, though. Yeah. Well, next up in uh, Netflix news, we've got some new set photos from Jessica Jones. Hey. Nice. And uh, it looks like everyone is under arrest. Everybody's say. going to jail. <laughs> Typical Jessica Jones. Wouldn't yeah. be a Jessica Jones season without people getting arrested. Well, I mean, the Defenders teaser trailer started with Jessica Jones in interrogation room, so. Well, just, actually, it looked like just Jessica and Trish, probably, because there's yeah. a lot of pictures of Jessica getting arrested and then one of Trish. That can't be good for her work, Trish. Trish talks. I wonder if she keeps the radio show. Maybe no, she, she'll just get a whole new demo. Maybe she's <laughs> got to go to podcasting. Uh well, and then into some movie news, Chris Evans has apparently extended his Marvel contract. Yay! Wow, that was under... We, we were wondering <laughs> if Captain uh, America was going to go away or not based on uh, his statements. And then he backtracked a little bit on that because he was done working out, looking like a Captain America. He was like, eh, I don't know if I want to keep doing that. But then the next paycheck came in and he was like, you know what? I might be into this for a while. So glad on Marvel for re-upping him. To extend his how many movies was it for Haley? I'm not sure. I'm still scrolling through this article. Okay, so usually it's by appearances in the movies, not necessarily full blown yeah. movies. But I haven't actually ever seen one of these contracts. Oh, okay, so originally it was a six film contract, and so the third Avengers movie would have been his last. But they decided to do Infinity War as the third and fourth Avengers movies. So he signed on for the fourth Avengers movie. Okay, that's basically what it is. One more movie. 
Yeah, that's all we're guaranteed at this point. All right. Well, we'll see if he's worth it or not. Of course he's worth it. What are you talking about? I don't know. I mean, Captain America gets old eventually. Yeah, but Chris Evans is this precious human golden retriever. So, yeah, don't you be talking about taking our Chris's. Yeah. I didn't. Just protect all of the Chris's. You guys can have all the Chris shirtless scenes you want. That's fine. I'm going to have more today. I'm going to go see Wonder Woman again this afternoon. <laughs> I need to see that again. Anyways, so we Black Panther is coming up very soon, and this week saw the release of a new trailer and a new poster. I am so excited for this. I mean, like, I haven't seen the trailer yet. I did see the latest one in the theater before Wonder Woman, though, and it looked great. So I'm looking forward to seeing this trailer as well. Yeah, uh, watch the trailer. Watch the trailer. It's so good. Um, Yes. So excited. This one dropped on Friday during the um, NBA game. And it was immediately put on Twitter because that's how it works. And oh man, just so excited. Like the costume, the sets, the cast, just everyone looks amazing. And seeing like the uh the set designer, the costume designer, they their commentary on Twitter and everything just has me so excited. And oh I can't wait. I just picked up uh the first volume of uh Tanahisi Coates's run of Black Panther and um Roxanne Gay's World of of Wakanda. So gearing up for this. Yeah. The upcoming Marvel movies are indeed good. The next one is Spider Man Homecoming, which will come out around the fourth of July here in the United yeah. States. And the ladies will be podcasting on it that Sunday. So keep, Yes. Keep uh in tuned for when that releases, since I will not be in studio not able to stream it. So just stay tuned for that. Haley, is that it for the news for the week? Uh, that is it. It's oh. all the news that's fit to print. All right. We'll keep on it next time. In the meantime, we're going to hear what you had to say. We got some folks at Twitter who have been sending us stuff. And, okay, so Kazekun Forever sent us Put my work desk together today. Here's most of my Marvel Funko figures. And that is a really impressive collection. And I am jealous of both your collection and your organizational skills because mine are not that organized. I wonder if he chose his desk to specifically conform to the height of his Marvel figures. That is some good planning, if so. <laughs> That's right. Now, if you... It'll be in the show notes, but if you haven't had a chance, go check it out. It was a tweet on June 6th. That is from at Kazen Forever. Kazekun. Excuse me. At Kazekun Forever. A uh, friend of the show at Adana Girl tweeted us a thing from the Marvel Report. The, from diversity behind the camera to female superheroes, we celebrate the five first Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. brought to the MCU. So this is a really good article. First LGBTQ character uh, with Joey from The Secret Warriors. First Asian American heroes in superhero TV ever with Daisy Johnson and Melinda May. Storytelling firsts that carry over to the MCU at large. Uh, everything from the Inhumans to the return of Hydra got its start on the show, even the introduction of the supernatural. Diversity behind the camera with one of the first female Asian American showrunners with Marissa Tankeron and writers like Nora Zuckerman and M Marissa penning scripts. So they have like a lot of female writers. First recent female centered Marvel superhero show with of course, Daisy taking the lead on the show and yeah, just a lot of firsts for agents of shield. That was it really drove the point home, and it's like, yeah, these are even more reasons to love this show. Thank, I'm so glad it got renewed. Now, have have we had director Hill on the show yet? Yes, um, oh, several seasons ago. Right, but was she director at the time? Oh, no. no. 
No, she's never been made official director, okay, I don't so, think. No. So it would be nice to have director Johnson on the show at some point in time. It would be. A Donna girl also tweeted us a really amusing picture. Uh, she retweeted it from uh, at Lorraine Sink, uh, C-I-N-K. Ready for Thor Ragnarok like. Tell us about your hammer, Thor, mm -hmm. says Mary Jane to Thor. It's with Peter Parker staring from the background, looking disapproving. And Thor is like, hell yeah, I'm going to tell you about my hammer. Mary Jo and, and these are not the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mary Jo and penis. Peter Parker aren't exactly an item in the uh, at least as far as I've gotten in the all new, all different. Uh, amazing Spider-Man Yeah, because if I remember right, it was Joe Quesada who was like, Spider-Man isn't relatable if he's married. Let's make him have an actual deal with the devil to break up his marriage. And it's still dumb, but... The last well, I we're getting, I guess, a month of Mary Jane variant covers huh? soon. So, Well, the last I saw she was dating Tony Stark, and I know that's changed. I just, I'm not current yet. As you can tell by Legends of Shield Longbox Edition, we are on yeah. October 2016 and catching up rapidly. So stay tuned to that and go over to Legends of Shield dot com. Actually, go to Gunnageek dot com for all of your Legends of Shield Longbox Edition needs. We also have a YouTube comment this week. Uh, so. Narayantix said, awesome job on your Luke Cage coverage. I can't wait to hear what y'all what you'll have to say about Legion. New mutants, yeah. And we need Agent Carter. Peace out. To which SP replied, Thank you. What's your favorite Luke Cage episode? To which Narayantix replied, Truthfully, SP, I'm a Luke Cage fan from forever, so all of them. I cheered a little when the night nurse arrived on the scene, and Misty Knight's characterization is on point. I think Netflix did a good job bringing the comics to life. I can't wait for the Defenders to see how the ensemble work together. Neither can we. Um, it's one of the so reasons, geared up for this. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why we're doing two podcasts a week, to get caught up with the Defenders in mind by the end of the year. We'll see if we can do that. So, thank you very much, Neary Antics. We really appreciate you commenting on YouTube. And for everybody else, feel free to comment on YouTube. might take a week or two for your comments to find your way <laughs> into the show due to our workflows, but we will... Definitely look into that. Ladies, it is time to enjoy our Sundays and walk this one out. Thank you, everybody, for continuing to download the podcast, for interacting with us. Thank you very much, Lauren, for making it back from the sick bed. We really appreciate you, <laughs> your health returning and your walking encyclopedia being added back to the show. We really appreciate that. So I am really glad to be back because I had no one to talk to other than Scott and the cats. So <laughs> <laughs> I do. You know what? I have noticed there's a brand new podcast out there with uh, Bernie the cat. So maybe you can record your cats back and, and give some feedback to Bernie Aww. as well. I'll give you the link to that show. Please do. We really want to thank everybody who's reached out to us over any form of social media, uh, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, if you feel like calling, we would love to hear from you. We really love when you, whether you give us your episode feedback reaction or just send us things that you think we'd be interested in or think that we'd find funny. We really, really appreciate it. We love hearing from you. We love knowing that you like listening to us. So thank you. Yeah, thank you to everybody that's listening. Uh, let us know what you think of the new two a week format. Um, how it's working out for you, how you like getting this extra, extra awesome goodness that we're sending your way. Uh, we appreciate all your feedback and we'd love to hear from you. We do indeed. It is why we do this. I mean, we like talking to each other, but we really like hearing from you as well. So yeah, let us know. It's going to be an exciting summer. Stay tuned as we move forward to the fall. I mean, we got uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, but there's also Thor Ragnarok in humans coming out the Defenders. We got all all bunch of great Marvel contact coming content coming at you. So uh, that's it for now. So until next time.
I'm Director Stargate Pioneer. I'm Agent Haley. I'm Agent Lauren. Bye, see you guys next week or next time. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening. If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunageek.com and you will find all our contact information and other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod, found at incompetech.com and also artists on pond5.com and audiojungle.net. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual hosts and do not represent Stargate Pioneer Productions, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., or Gunna Geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation, Marvel Studios, and ABC. No infringement is intended. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is copyright 2017.